Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drew and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a automatic updater for your application in C Sharp. Now I've already uh, prepped two applications. One will be the updater and one will be the actual up pro, uh, application that you will be updating. So there. And in the application itself, it's just a simple console app that says, hi, my name is Bob. If we were to run it, that's all it is right there. All right, and in the launcher application, all it is is a little window that would have the application name and a uh, status icon. And this will be updated based on uh, what stage in the update that we are going through. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to your uh, launcher or updater program and manage NuGet packages. And you're gonna wanna grab uh, an updater software that I, or a, a library that I developed. And it's uh, under chaselabs.updater. And you'll grab that. And once you have it, you'll go into here uh, under your main window. And this can be a uh, WPF application, a console application, uh, or even a WinForm application. I am using a WPF application just because it's easier for me to manage. All right, and in here, we're going to create a new method and it's going to be called update. And for the using statements that we're going to want, we're going to want a using statement for the updater uh, for window threading, uh, for the system, for the uh, system.threading.tasks. And we'll be using that to make it a multi-threaded updater. So your program won't freeze every time it needs to download or move a file. It will be very fluent. So at the top of the page here, we're going to do dispatcher. And then we're going to call this dis, and this is going to be equal to dispatcher.currentDispatcher. And this will help with our multi-threaded operation. And then in here, we're going to do task.run. And we're going to create a new action. And inside of this action, we are going to uh, call our uh, status label here. If you don't have this, it is all right. You don't need to do this part. Um, and we'll say the content is equal to sh checking for updates. And then we'll just need a few files or a, a few variables. So we'll want the string for the uh, zip file URL. And for this, I will be using uh, Dropbox here. And this was just for my testing. So I'll delete that. Um, so I just created a folder in my Dropbox to have the files located. Um, so we'll leave that blank until it is all squared away. Actually, I can do it right now. Uh, so to create the zip file, we'll grab our application, put it in release mode and build it. And now we will open the file location, popped up on my other monitor, go to bin releases, and then we will grab these two files, right click, and you can either use WinRAR or whatever uh, uh, zip file creation you want, You can or, or you can even do Windows uh, send to compress zip folder. 
Uh, I'm just gonna use WinRAR because I'm able to make it a little bit smaller if I need to. And we're gonna call it application.zip. This actually doesn't really matter. It just makes it uh, easier to understand uh, what it is when you're seeing it. So you'll compress it, then we'll create another file. And this is gonna be called version. Uh, now you can do version.txt if you want, uh, just for ease of use, I'm just gonna call it version, no um, extension. And we'll open this up in a text editor such as Visual Studio Code is what I'll be using. Oops. And I'll drag that over here. And what we'll do is in here, we're going to do a string key uh, version key, and this will be equal to application colon and a space. And we'll copy this and we'll paste it here. And then for the first version, we'll label it as 0.0.1 .0 and we'll save it and we'll close out of that. And that was just my cheat sheet right there. And then we'll go over to Dropbox or whatever uh, file hosting uh, service you use, as long as it has the ability uh, to generate a direct download link, you are fine. Um, and I recommend Dropbox because it's easy to update the same file without having to update the URL because um, you want it to be a static URL for the files. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll click here, click share, and then create a link, copy the link, and we'll paste it up here. And you want to change, for Dropbox, you want to change the DL equals zero to DL equals one to make it a direct download. Then we'll go over to Visual Studio, paste that URL in here, and then we'll do a string remote version URL. That will be equal to this one. So we'll click on it, create link, copy the link, paste it, change that zero to a one, copy it, and paste it here. All right, then I'll just move that up there so those are all together. <clears throat> and then down here, we are going to uh, specify the path to where it will be downloaded to. Um, so I'm going to do string uh, update path. And that is going to be, uh, I do path dot system dot io dot path. Um, and you're gonna want this to be in a folder uh, that has, um, that your application will have permissions to, uh, so it can read and write. Um, and because I don't want this program to have to be, oops, and this is not path, it is a path dot combine. There we go. Uh, so for me, I'm going to put in the app data folder, which is made for, uh, applications to be able to write to, basically. Um, so in here, I'm going to put environment dot get folder path. Uh, and then you're gonna wanna get the special folder dot the application data. And then in there, <clears throat> I'm going to create a uh, path called tutorial and then inside of that, I'll create another path called auto updater, sure. And then inside of that, I want it to update, to download the zip file to a folder called update. And then we're going to create a string for the uh, application path, which is going to be the same as this, except I'm going to put it into the bin folder. And then again, we're going to create a path 
for the local version. And that will be in here and it'll be version. All right. And I believe those are all that we need. So we are going to next create a variable and that variable is going to be of type updater up and you can name it update and this will be equal to updater dot in it and in here you're going to plug in the download url and for the zip directory that is the update path for the unzip directory that will be the application path there we go for the launch executable name, I didn't actually specify that up here, but and launch. And you can obviously put these all right down here if you want. Uh, but just for ease of reading, I'm going to do it this way. So the launch executable name for us, it's going to be application.exe, it's right there. This will be uh, when it finally finishes updating, it will launch the application, obviously. Uh, so we'll do launch exe. And then overwrite, um, you can leave this blank for true or you can specify if it's false, but this will basically uh, clean out the current uh, uh, application directory um, and for me, I do want to do that. And there we go, because this actually has to be an I updater. So there's that, but I'm just gonna do var for variable. Um, and then down here, we're going to check if there is an update available. Um, now we can do this multiple ways. Um, so if we want, for example, to have control over this text area right here, we'll do it the way I'm about to show you. But if you don't really care about that, you just want to automatically update um, and it automatically will check if there's an update available and download it um, without any uh, real feedback, you can do that. You can do that by doing update manager dot update and then you would just fill in all of this information here which is all this information and it will go through and uh, do what I'm about to do manually um, except what I'm about to do is uh, send feedback to the launcher application telling them that this is happening um, it just depends on your type of application uh, so we're going to do update manager dot check for update and we're going to put the version key as the version key, the local version path as the local version path, and then remote version URL. And this returns a Boolean. If it's true, then the update is it needs to happen. If it's false, then obviously there will be no update. And regardless, we're going to want to do update dot launch executable at the end. And here we're going to do the status label dot content equals uh, launching application. There we go. Can't type there. And then in here, we're going to say, ah, I almost forgot. We are inside of a other thread. So we're actually going to have to call our uh, host thread, the one that the status content is under to actually be able to get access to it. So to do that, we're going to do dis.invoke and we're going to create a new action and then this is going to be equal to a uh, series of curly braces and at the end we're going to do dispatch priority dot normal 
And then we'll put that in there. And just for ease of use, I am going to move that up and copy it, move it down. Then I'm going to paste it over that and paste it over that. And you want to make sure that you're just getting uh, UI based things in here. Um, the reason that we are putting this in another thread is so these will run normally and the UI won't freeze up when it's, for example, uh, downloading the file or unzipping it, because if it's a large file, it can take a few moments and you don't want the application to freeze and wait for that to happen before updating the UI. All right. And in here, we're going to say update found. And then we're going to do updater update dot download update. Downloading update, and we'll put this right below this. Um, and each one of these methods has about a half a second delay between them, uh, so everything can finish up before it starts the next process. So what's going to happen is, if we're checking for an update, it's going to go down, it's going to say update found, it's going to go through this, and then while it's going through this, it will go down and say downloading update. And then after that, we're going to do update dot unzip. And then we're going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it down here and unzipping update. And then again, I'm going to do update dot clean up. And all this does is it removes the uh, update zip file and the update zip folder um, and any other files that are related to the update. Granted, those are the only two. Um, and it'll just make it back to new again. And then we're going to do oops, this and we'll say finishing uh, the update process or finishing the update or finishing up. Update dot, actually I believe that is it. And there is a download progress that you can get right here, which will be uh, a live uh, integer from zero to 100 of the download process. I'm not gonna show it here, um, just because the file itself is about a few megabytes and it wouldn't even really be perceivable. Um, so yeah, there we go. We got all of this. Now, I go over here to make sure I'm not missing anything. And no. So the next stage would be we need to grab this version right here and replace this version. So it will know that it's been updated. So here, after, uh, after that, we're going to say web client, oops, using var client equals system dot net dot web client. It's going to be a class new. And then we're going to say client dot download file. And the file to download is the remote version URL to the local version path. And then after that, we're gonna do client.dispose. 
There. And after all of that is done, we should be all set. So now if I open up the folder path, uh, hold on. As you can see, if I type T for tutorial, there aren't any uh, folders here. If I were to put that over here, put this over here, and we were to launch the launcher, you will see here. First of all, you'll see this pop up. Oops, and we never actually called the update method here. There we go. Let's try that again. So I'm pressing F5 to build and run. And there we go. As you can see, an update was found and it's putting it into this folder. And that folder was just deleted. Again, it happened really fast. Um, and it created this version file. And in here is our application where it says, hi, my name is Bob. Now let's quickly make a update for this. So I'm going to say, hi, my name is not Bob because I am not creative. So let's rebuild that. Make sure we are in release mode. It doesn't necessarily matter. It just gets rid of uh, some personal information about your computer in there. Um, so in here, we're going to open up that, the uh, zip file if it's still there, or you can just create a new one. We're going to drag these files in and shore out the lead and set that to best. And then in here, I am just going to, I'll open it with notepad for now. So as you can see, it's version 0.0.1, .0 and we're going to update that to 0 0.0.2, .0 and you can click save. And now that those are both there, we're going to go to Dropbox. Oops, that's not the right folder. And we're going to drag both of these files in. Now, as soon as I launch the application and let's pull dear god all right now if i launch the application again what it should do is we should see it's checking for updates an update was found and it's downloaded the update now that it's launching the application it will say hi my name is not bob and to show you how this works um, with a real world application, I will launch an app that I made uh, that I'll be doing a video on shortly that has all of these uh, features. Granted, there's no update for it, but as you can see, it does update like that. You can add a nice little loading screen or uh, GIF as I have. Um, and in this application, for example, I put the version number inside of the application. Um, so it makes it easier to understand. And in a future video, I will make a uh, tutorial on how to make a setup project um, to install the application using this method. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.